Carolyn. I'm uh, going into my senior year, and I am doing research at the lab here at UC Davis, examining motor adaption and the effect that explicit feedback has on um, the learning of motor learning. <laughs> And so one of the first things we are examining in our lab is how do we learn? And so we're just gonna go over two types of learning, um, which is implicit and explicit learning. Um, implicit learning is more subconscious, um, like riding a bicycle, whereas explicit learning is more um, conscious and you're more aware of what you are doing. And so where we're, what we are doing in our lab is we're examining explicit and implicit um, learning processes and how they influence motor learning and adaption. And previous research has examined the spatial generalization of adaption, which is the application of learning to different movement directions um, not experienced during training. And so, how do we induce implicit and explicit learning? Um, you may be wondering. And we do this by using a machine called the kin arm. And this, um, this machine is a robotic arm with the ability to exert and measure force, velocity, and position. And so with the kin arm, we design a paradigm and then we recruit subjects to come in um, in order to do this paradigm. And for this specific project, we were able to recruit 20 participants for our implicit group and 20 for our explicit group, and respectively, their control and our experimental group. And so if you were like a participant, you were to come in, you would go through this series of tasks, like a little video game, and you would go through a baseline task, a training task, and then a generalization task. Uh, I think these slides are out of order. <laughs> no. Okay. So for the baseline task, um, you you would do something as this, where you would see a red, a green, or a yellow light. And the green line means that you are learning and you, the green line basically means um, if you are learning and if you're getting it correct. Um, and that's how we're measuring our learning, essentially. And our control group would be implicit, so unconscious learning, and they will experience an actual force. Um, whereas our experimental group, which um, does the learning consciously, um, will actually see a, a visual form of feedback, um, which will be represented as a blue line, and that will represent the force. So they would have to like, trace it instead of feeling the force. And then generalization is just um, after they initially learned everything, um, we tested um, their skill to 13 new directions for, with respect to the train movement direction. And so you may be wondering like, why are we doing all of this? Um, we are doing this in order to compare this data from healthy subjects to patients with neurodegenerative diseases, such as Parkinson's disease, um, in order to better understand how these patients can learn and generalize motor behaviors. Um, and this may be so we can perhaps detect their disease earlier on um, and maybe in a more affordable and quicker process. And then our second reason is to perhaps increase the learning rate and generalization rate by um, showing that these two processes are independent of each other. And if they're independent then of each other, then um, they can be additive. And um, finally, I just wanna say thank you to the lab that was able to support me, which is the SMI lab here at UC Davis and the NSF CAMP program, the California Alliance for Minority Participation, um, who were able to give me the opportunity to do research this summer. Um, and these are, um, all of my mentors that were able to help me in the lab. Um, yeah, and I just wanna give a huge shout out to them because without them, I wouldn't be in the position I am. Um, so thank you for their support. And then thank you for um, the Repicture program as well for supporting me this summer. Okay, and that's it. 
Um, thank you guys for listening. And then if you have any questions, feel free to ask.